Well, despite today's reversal, the Dow finished the week in the green, its fourth week in a row of gains. So what's next? More gains, says Jim Paulson, chief investment strategist at Wells Capital Management. Mr. Paulson, welcome. Good to have you with us. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, you have a pretty aggressive target uh, this year for the S&P 500. What is it and why are you so confident? Yeah, I've been since year end thinking we could maybe go up and touch 1700 sometime this year for the S&P 500. So, you know, t tonight maybe we're about halfway to that target price. And it certainly won't be a straight line. I, I fully anticipate we'll have some uh, correction along the way here at some point. But I still think we're maybe only halfway to, to where we're going to go this year. I think the biggest driving catalyst, Tyler, this year has been the fact that growth, economic growth, keeps coming in far faster than most people anticipate at the end of the year. Most people anticipate about 2% growth this year. I think we're coming in closer to 3 And as, as that becomes more obvious, confidence goes up, and that goes right into higher valuations for stock prices. Jim, you were telling me earlier today that investors shouldn't worry about this correction. Why not? And how much of a correction are you expecting? Well, I, I just think the corrections, uh, Susie, are so hard to call, and they're very short in duration, and I think this one would be mild in, in, in magnitude as well. I'm thinking if we do get one, it'll be like a 5 to 7% pullback, and you've got to make two right calls. You've got to call it right when it starts and call it right when it ends, and often, oftentimes over time, you'll probably won't do that. And if you miss it and miss out the, the rally and it goes, let's say, 10% higher from where we are today, I think that you do yourself a disservice. I would prefer to take advantage of market action by either uh, lightening up on those positions that have been strong and, and, and filtering assets back to positions that have been trailing as opposed to trying to time the market uh, uh, gyrations. You know, overall, you think the uh, a stronger than expected economy is what's going to power the market to higher levels to that 1700 that you see in the S&P 500. But which specific sectors of the market do you think will lead the way? Well, I like more, most of the cyclicals better than the defensive stocks, Tyler. I, I think as, as Mark keeps going higher, more and more people are under-allocated to economic sensitivity. So I really like the manufacturing stocks, the industrials and the basic materials. Uh, I think the financial stocks have done well and will continue to do well. And I would look at trying to, to uh, put a little bit into technology stocks that have been really bad for the last year. But I think I'm seeing confidence among CEOs rise and capital spending going up. And I think that sector could come to life yet in the second half of this year. Jim, as you know, uh, Fed policymakers, Federal Reserve policymakers are meeting on Tuesday. Do you, nobody's really expecting any significant uh, change in policy, but do you expect any change in tone and conversation? And how might that impact investor confidence? I think so, Susie. Again, I don't think they're going to make any real substantive change at this meeting, but you're already hearing a different tone among Fed members coming out. You know, the, clearly the economy in, has gone from crisis in 2008 to now recovery. It might still be weaker than people want, but it's out of crisis. But Federal Reserve policy is still very crisis-like and, and aggressive and unconventional. And I think there's a big disconnect there. If the economy continues to improve, you're going to have more pressure coming on the Fed to mm -hmm. try to normalize its policy. Uh, and I think you're already hearing conversations, and you might hear more of that rhetoric next week. All right, Jim Paulson of Wells Capital Management, thanks very much.